Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop and today is Sunday, October 6th and we have a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico and this hurricane is already up to 85 miles per hour. It is Hurricane Milton. You know, last week we had Hurricane Helene passing across Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Still power outages continue across the path of that storm but uh, it's getting much better. The power is slowly being restored across many of those communities affected by uh, Helene's path uh, uh, 10 days ago now. And so right now we're looking at Hurricane Milton. So let's first of all take a look at the radar summary from across the southeast. It shows quite a bit of rain falling across Florida already. This is not from the hurricane. This is from a trough of the uh, system of warm front, cold front, trough of low pressure in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, and that's funneling in moisture across a large portion of the peninsula of Florida and southeastern Georgia, south of the Savannah area, Brunswick, St. Simons, Jekyll Island, uh, Waycross is beginning rain off and on all day today. But there's the hurricane over there in the northern portion of the Bay of Campeche into the southern Gulf of Mexico. Let's take a look at the tropical conditions uh, across the um, uh, tropical Atlantic Ocean. Of course, you got uh, over here Kirk and then you have uh, Leslie over here. Uh, these two storms are not going to be affecting our area whatsoever. But over here in the Gulf of Mexico, that is where Milton is. And here's the path and track from the National Hurricane Center. This is the five o'clock Sunday afternoon track and forecast. So let's take a look at that, a little bit closer view of this situation. And there you can see uh, the storm over here in the uh, Gulf of Mexico where the water temperatures out in this area are very, very uh, high. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. But the forecast is for the storm to move toward the east and then curve to the northeast and then intensify into a Category 4 storm. Now, by uh, Monday at 2 o'clock, expect to see the winds up to 125 miles per hour. Tuesday morning at 2 o'clock in the morning, it should be up to about 140 miles per hour. And then a Category 4 storm again on Tuesday afternoon at 145 miles an hour. Wednesday, 2 o'clock in the morning, approaching the coast of Florida, uh, just uh, well off the coast of Florida with still a Category 4 hurricane of 140 miles an hour. And then Wednesday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, approaching uh, the coast of Florida, the middle west coast of Florida, uh, with winds there of 120 miles per hour. Yeah, it seems like it's weakening, and it is, but still, that's a very powerful hurricane, a Category 3. Category 3 and above is devastating. It produces a considerable amount of damage. Now, the other issue is this. As the storm winds seem to weaken, the storm size will increase. The question is, will it affect southern Georgia and southern South Carolina? We know it's going to affect the entire peninsula of Florida with devastating conditions. And then as it moves off the coast of Florida, passing uh, around the uh, Cape Canaveral area out in the Atlantic Ocean, it'll weaken to a Category 1 hurricane and then down to a tropical storm. But uh, let's take a look at uh, some of the sea surface temperatures right now. And so I can look at that over here, bring it on up. I want to bring up the satellite imagery first of all. And there you can see the late afternoon satellite imagery. You're seeing a burst of cloudy uh, weather uh, and storms around the center of the storm itself. Let's take a look at the infrared image because that shows a better uh, indication of what's going on. I want uh, channel 13, where is it here? Uh, that's it right there. All right, there you can see intense uh, thunderstorms, actually intense convection. There's not too much lightning associated with this right now uh, over in this area here, but we're seeing intense uh, conditions around the core of the storm showing that it's already drawing from the heat of the Gulf of Mexico. And this storm right now is nothing there to stop it. There's no wind shear aloft and everything is in prime conditions for rapid intensification. All right, let's take a look at the uh, sea surface temperatures. There you have it right there. Again, in the upper um, actually uh, upper 20s to around 30 degrees Celsius. What does that mean for us? We want Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit temperatures, that means middle 80s. And, and hurricanes and tropical storms, you know, they will thrive on anything above 75 degrees. 80 degrees, yeah, 85 degrees. 
a lot of energy to work with so, and there's a lot of energy out here what about the forecast tracks well a lot of the models are converging across uh, just where the national hurricane center has that track moving and it's moving toward the west coast of florida in and around the tampa area uh, sarasota uh, to the north of fort myers and then crossing right over disney world and orlando uh, moving almost on uh, i-4 and then moving off the coast around the uh, uh, Cape Canaveral area, Titusville, and then out into the Atlantic Ocean. Stay south of Georgia and South Carolina, but the wind field will be increasing as it moves off toward the east. As the storm speeds weaken, the storm size increases. And the winds, though, looks like right now will be uh, less than tropical storm force along the coastal counties of Georgia and certainly across the counties of South Carolina, less than 39 miles an hour. So I'm not overly concerned right now for Georgia and South Carolina, but for the peninsula of Florida, this will be devastating. Okay, let's look at the potential uh, strength of the storm. The computer models and the hurricane models are indicating a high probability of Category 4 hurricane. And some models even going up to possibility of it reaching Category 5. That's not out of the question. That's 156 miles an hour or greater. Uh, th there's uh, some probabilities of that being achieved as it's in the warm, almost hot waters of the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Not when it makes landfall. Uh, it'll start weakening as some shear will start developing over the storm as it approaches the coast of Florida. All right. Let's take a look at the uh, this model here. This is the ECMWF. It seems to be um, the, the better model. The other models are uh, seem to be a little bit off track, but the ECMWF it seems to be doing a better job. So let's uh, put this into motion right here and uh, bring the storm into view. There it is right there. This is as of, uh, let's go with 12, um, right here. This is... Uh, Wednesday morning at sunrise, basically sunrise, 8 o'clock in the morning. There it is off the coast of Fort Myers, Florida, moving off to the northeast. And there you can see it's ramping up. Very strong, dangerous, powerful Hurricane Milton approaching the coast. Now, this area over here, you're going to have an extremely strong southeasterly and southerly flow of wind. So they're going to have a tremendous storm surge uh, over here from Tampa all the way down to the Florida Keys. Uh, a tremendous storm surge out there. And on the other side of the uh, storm, on the north side, they're going to be having a strong westerly flow, and that's going to produce a very low tide out in that area. Uh, so uh, that has to be contended with. And then looking at the uh, conditions of forecast, the computer models is expecting it to bring it on land sometime around... Um, uh, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock on Wednesday evening in and around the uh, Tampa, St. Petersburg, Clearwater area, and then moves it right across Orlando uh, and then across over to Titusville and Cape Canaveral, just to the south of uh, St. Augustine and uh, off to the north in, in the uh, Jacksonville area. That is where they're going to be seeing very strong northwesterly winds, and that's going to produce a high tide, very high tide, and a strong storm surge across the upper portion of the coast of Florida. What about the Georgia and South Carolina coast? Well, it's going to push the tide up a little bit, about maybe two feet, possibly three, but the tide, high tide for this cycle coming through with, is only going to be about 7.2 feet. So uh, once again, the moon is in our favor. We're at what's called a quadrature of the moon, first quarter phase moon, so we're not seeing much of a, a tidal effect. Hence, we should not have any issues with a tidal surge coming in across the Georgia, South Carolina coast. All right, let's go back in time and look at, uh, well, let's, let's just keep it right here and go to total precipitation. Uh, that's the other issue, flooding rains coming in. So total precipitation forecast uh, coming in over here. Uh, let's bring it into uh, the time frame here. And there we can see. Let's bring it down. There. Uh, very heavy rains. On, with, very expected because the water temperature is so warm. You know, the warmer the atmosphere and the warmer the water it draws from, the more rain you're going to get. And that's just the case, what's going on right now. And uh, we're looking here at 8 to 10 inches of rain across central portions of Florida. Uh, over here, maybe in extreme South Georgia, up to maybe the Brunswick, St. Simons area, Jekyll Island, uh, even though we're into Waycross, St. Mary's, we might see well, uh, two to three inches of rain. In the Savannah area, probably 
less than a half inch of rain if, if, if it follows this track. And the same thing for the coast of South Carolina, maybe a third of an inch of rain. But right now for Florida, the, the entire peninsula basically is going to get deluged by extremely heavy rains associated with this tropical storm. All right, let's take a look at the uh, uh, weather page, my weather page, uh, savannapat.name is my website. And uh, uh, this is uh, showing the, uh, I still have the power outages uh, left over from Hurricane Helene. Uh, most of the area is getting uh, back into power, as I just showed you earlier in the video, so that's good. Still some power outages, but not nearly as widespread as it was. A lot of power lines, power poles came down. And there you can get the uh, track from the National Hurricane Center. Just click on that. It'll take you directly to the National Hurricane Center. And the forecast for us, though, is calling for, well, we might see some sunshine tomorrow. And then going into Tuesday and Wednesday, that's when the clouds will roll in. Maybe some rain. The rain chances aren't that great for Georgia and South Carolina. And then after the storm moves off toward the east, it will bring in some cool, dry air down from the north. And you're going to love this. By the end of the week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, it's going to feel like, well, get your pumpkin spice ready because you're going to feel autumnish. Uh, it's going to feel like fall with temperatures highs in the middle 70s and lows in the middle 50s. Some of the inland counties will be in the lower 50s. Uh, it's going to be great Friday for high school football and Saturday for college football. So around here anyway. If you're the type of person who likes to pray, please pray for Florida because uh, the residents of Florida, this storm is going to be devastating. So I'll have more weather videos coming up about this storm on Monday and Tuesday as the storm progresses across the region. But uh, again, uh, be concerned about the residents of Florida. Thanks for watching. Bye.